we got the Spear of Justice here, and I think we're gonna click on. Was this not the bit? Oh, okay, hold on. I, oh, oh, I actually screwed up here. The bivouac was supposed to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wow. Ladies and gentle mages, civilians across the multiverse, welcome back to another episode with Mana Mana, and today we've got a juice for you before we dig into the deck. Make sure to leave a like, the button looks just like this, and it does help out the channel tremendously. I greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and just address what I do have the Discord now is open. It's like me and like seven people right now, so if you'd like to be a part of the community, hopefully we can kind of get it bigger. I am just gonna have it, and hopefully we can just kind of grow it as time goes on. I'm in this for the long haul, baby. Let's dig right into the deck. We got that's the spirit. We got Agris Kaos, the spirit of justice. I kind of want to make a deck kind of focus on this. Now, this card is a little weird. I think this, uh, this, the way this card works is it kind of wants like creatures on your side of the battlefield and creatures on their side of the battlefield. So in this weird little like Boros control type of like thing, I think this is probably the best way to do it. Double strike vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you're going to choose up to one target creature. If it's suspected, exile it. If it's not, suspect it. So whenever it's suspect, obviously it creates a menace and can't block. Now, this is good because if it has a menace, offensively, you can choose your own creature. And then if, it, if it's on the defense, you can make it so that your opponent can't block. And there's a lot of different ways that you can like create good matchups this way. And what really is good is like if you do it two times, what you're going to do is suspect it. And you're going to exile it, just kind of removing it completely. So this card can be a little weird. You kind of want creatures on your own end. You want creatures on their own end. So... What do we got going on here? We got the Krenko's Buzz Crusher. This is kind of a way we have creatures on our own stuff. And we also have the Urbass Forge. So why do we have like the Krenko's Buzz Crusher? Well, Krenko's Buzz Crusher is very, very good versus Domain. I mean, versus Domain, it just crushes Domain. Absolutely love that so much. I have four Field of Ruin because, again, we do want that land disrupt disrupt dis destruction we want that land destruction type of stuff here as um on top of it so if you notice i am actually running 28 lands because there are times where we go for the field of ruin and we can kind of get kind of mana screwed so we got the mirrors and stuff like that let's go for our alternative win condition all will be one so whenever you put one or more counters on a, on a permanent or player i actually it's kind of weird though these are only silver bullets i really don't know like i said this is we're kind of spitballing here let's go into why we are kind of running this thing i think this is like the perfect sneaky brew i Maybe it's recency bias. I've been seeing a lot less like Azorius control and Esper control. It's been a lot more just like Boros Convoke, you know, aggro. But even when it is like, um, you know, like Esper or something, it's usually Esper Legends. I don't see a whole lot of Azorius mill. That's going to be our worst matchup. It's not even close. Azorius control because they have they can control the board way better than us. Our Sunfall's Farewells are not good and they've got a way better late game than us. So we're like fake control and then like they're like the control that like is control control if that makes any sense either way we got the millennium calendar so what we can do is use all will be one to go for like you know like we put a, um, a counter on the herbrass forge or like a planeswalker you can kind of use that but the millennium calendar does kind of get in the way of a temporary lockdown which does kind of suck just but that's the reason why it's more like an alternative kind of win condition temporary lockdown is just like the meaning of life and death versus boros convoke and mono red so we're just running that but other than that you can kind of see what we got here i am running farewell and i am running sunfall i know they're uh you know kind of uh boo boo but like hey it is what it is i haven't had a farewell deck here in a while so it is what it is boros control we got the restless bivouac it is what it is let's just see if this weird little spear of justice can just put some justice on some boros convoke so that is what it is consider joining the channel that helped me out as the content creator Go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. And without further ado, let's get ready to vanquish some enemies. Strictly Butter. How we doing here? I think this looks pretty good. If, um, yeah, I think we're looking good. Got the Sundown Pass. Oh, they have the Bivouac. Obviously, we definitely love the Bivouac and a more control style build. They see this, they're going to be thinking Boros Convoke. But no, 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 no. We are running Boros Control. So I got the Field of Ruin. The Field of Ruins um, can play a little bit awkwardly, especially if you are kind of mana starved. You don't really want to blow it back up. So this is going to be full-blown mono green. All right. Well, I think uh, to maintain tempo, we're just going to go for the get lost because this thing actually does get bigger as the forests do come down. So that's a pretty easy move here. So now I got a decision. I want to go for Urbass Forge. I think we might as well get this down. This thing becomes bigger and bigger every single turn. And Urbass Forge is pretty much like our like main win condition versus like actual control because Azorius control can get hard face down card okay well i don't want to miss my i don't 
want to miss my land drop here, so I think going for Brass's Tunnel Grinder is going to be the move. I don't like this face down card existing uh, either, but it, we're going to have to deal with it for now. So let's get the the Crinkles Buzz Crusher is actually pretty bad, considering that uh, they only run basics pretty much anyway. Temporary Lockdown, I'm actually just going to let them have it. And we're just going to draw this and see if we can get into the Elspeth's Resplendent. So, okay, I think this is okay. We, this thing get, does get bigger. We do get the Descent Trigger off of Brass's Tunnel Grinder. I think we're okay for now. And what I really want to do is get into the Spirit of Justice. This card is like a really... The way that it works is a little bit awkward. I don't want to say... Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say awkward. It's just really like... It can be awkward, <laughs> but you know, in a, in a grindier matchups here, the, uh, the I, I think it's gonna be really good. So I think this might actually be, you know, something that we can kind of test it out on. Hidden Nursery, and another little flourishing thing. I actually wonder. This is a disguise card. I actually wonder if the disguise card is actually that thing. In that case, probably should have gone for like the temporary lockdown. But uh, I guess this is a good problem to have. We were mana kind of mana a sketchy last time but now we're not so instead of going for elspeth i can't protect her so let's go ahead and, and go straight in for our little spirit of justice here and the way that it works we're gonna put a counter on the four four here now it can't block so i kind of like putting that on there so i know it can it can still swing but it can't block and i think we're like kind of awkwardly trying to race i don't know and it oh okay yeah so what so this is just a, a disguised flourishing bloomkin we're looking good there um Two six sixes, that's pretty scary. I think I'm gonna have to take it. I can't really lose my spirit of justice here. And next time I can actually um I can actually get rid of that. But not before we go for Elspeth Resplendent. And now I'm gonna put a lifelink counter on this. Yeah, let's go in for the plus one. Put a and we got double strike here, so it's pretty nice. And we already have vigilance. So now we've got a four-one Urbrass Forge, and now we can just exile this thing. Just scot free, looking good. Bang, 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 down to three, and we go back up to twelve. And next turn, we're going to have a 5-1 Urbrask Forge. And if they don't go for Elspeth, we can actually put the uh, the token in the... Well, actually, we can't because it's actually at the beginning of combat. But if they don't get rid of the Spear of Justice, then we should be okay. So, Hammer Skull. Okay. Ooh, and a Fight Rigging. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Fight Rigging. Definitely, it's, I think it's just going to come down to what they can draw. Or not draw, hide away, I guess, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's see if they go. I'll put it on. They put it on the skull and not the uh, the flourishing thing. And that is a Serac and Gore Claw. Okay, so that just gives things with um. No, it doesn't even have haste, so we're good there. She's gonna be swinging that as a seven seven. Hold on. Hold on. I think I'm good here. If I if I let this go, I don't need to protect Elspeth. Plus, I can't really get, like just block. I'm not gonna chump block anyway. Oh, yeah, this is fine. Sorry, Elspeth, but if we swing in, we can give a suspect counter to one of the creatures if they don't drop anything else. Yeah, I think we're fine, right? So we just go for the restless bivouac. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think we just won this. Unless they have like tail swipe or something like that, and they're gonna go for instant speed. So that's the only thing I'm really scared of. Unless they have like a tail swipe or something that fights at instant speed. I think we're fine, so we're going to go for the Restless Bivouac. Just kind of do this. We got the Urbask Forge as a 5-1. And then we're going to suspect one of their creatures here, which makes that not be able to block. So the Spirit of Justice looks like we're going to take it. They are holding up priority. Do they have, a, a like, an instant fight spell? Oh, Besiege you. Okay, well, that's what they're doing. Well, they, they, they screwed up really badly here because they should have done this before the trigger. We're still going to get the, the, the creature now, right? Um... Yeah, let's just go for it. Doesn't, it doesn't really matter here. Um, sure, I think we're low on white. We can kind of go for white. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter here, though. But uh, we still get the 4-1, though. That's kind of the, the thing. I don't know why they didn't do that. Like, my, sorry, my upkeep. Yeah, they give an oops, and that was definitely an oops. So, Russell's Bivouac. We're definitely going to swing in. We got, the, we got the Spear of Justice here. And I think we're going to click on... Was this not the... Bi oh. Okay, hold on. I, oh, oh, I actually screwed up here. The Bivouac was supposed to... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wow. Alrighty, here, looking good here, looking good here. Hello, Lucas Fetch. Let's go and drop down our Sundown Pass. Just set down the, um, yeah, we'll be we'll, okay here. Got the Lightning Helix. Of course, we are playing against Aggro, which does seem to be the case, being the red. I wish it was mono red instead of Boros Convoke, just because our Lightning Helix does kind of hit them um, a lot better. But it doesn't really matter, because we, we have the Temporary Lockdown, and the Temporary Lockdown does screw up the Boros Convoke really, really badly. We're Boros. 
we're like, you know, we're like quirky, you know, undercover Boros. They're just so like stereotypical Boros. We kind of know what you're doing here with the Fault there and Epicure. Um, I'm assuming it's Boros. Okay, there's Boros. Okay, there's the White Source. I'm assuming, I don't think Mile Red even runs the Epicure anymore. I don't think there's really like any builds that even do, but you know, I, mean, I don't know. All right, you know what? If they already swung, maybe I should go for the Lightning Helix here. I guess we might as well go up to 22. Again, if they do go wide here, I am going to go for the temporary lockdown anyway. And I don't think the uh, the Lightning Helix doesn't really hit the uh, the Knight anyway. So there's the Epic here. Okie dokie. There is the Knight. And... Oh, they do, have, they do have the Gleeful Demolition. And thank God. Oh, there's our Millennium Calendar, which does not synergize very well with the temporary lockdown. But it does kind of fetch... Um, you know, It does go well with our Millennium Calendar calendar type of uh, all will be one ability but we don't have to worry about that right now because we dropped the temporary lockdown and we don't have to worry about it, anything say we have vigilance not that big of a deal so now I'm, now i'm trying to think here okay i think it's probably the best thing to go for the um i cannot i'm gonna try and pronounce this augur's cows the spirit of justice but i really like this thing I, in like more creature heavy builds it does it is pretty nice i gotta make this decision if i'm gonna submit zero because if i submit zero on the evangelist that means it can't be blocked. I know that the next turn I can just exile it, which is nice because it doesn't get that death trigger of the bat. But if I can't block it, then they are incentivized to swing. But this way, they're not going to swing with the Evangelist because I just block it with four toughness. And this deck does not really run most of the time. Most of the time. They don't run removal unless it's like that case. Some, some decks don't even run the case. That case that deals damage to a creature equal to the number of creatures that you have. But... Um, I think right now the Spirit of Justice is looking pretty good. Sometimes the suspect stuff is a little like clunky and weird. But in some time when, when it's not, it's very good. So Alright, let's see what we got. All oh, okay, so we have all will be one and we've got the Millennium Calendar. Uh, okay. Um Do we want to just set that up? I kinda want the the, the Kranko's Buzz Crusher in and of itself is not very strong in this matchup. So, I'm, I have Vigilance, so let, while we think that over, let's go ahead and swing, and should I put the Suspect Counter on the Evangelist? I don't, I think we kind of want to, it does suck, because this way, I think this way we're going to have to commit to the Kranko's Buzz Crusher. Next turn, I can, uh, I can exile it. So this does give it Menace, but it can't block anymore, which the blocking aspect of it doesn't really matter, we're at 20 life. So instead of going for the Millennium Calendar, I think we're just going to have to go for the Buzz Crusher. Just for the body, because it has four toughness, and even if they do swing in with the Evangelist now, we can double block the Evangelist. Or maybe maybe not? Actually, probably won't. I probably will just uh, block whatever they have going on, let the Evangelist through, and then we can actually exile the Evangelist. I think that's a little bit better. See, the, the Crankle's Buzz Crusher does go nice with the Tunnel Grinder. It does go a lot better with the Tongue Grinder. Let's go ahead and just hit them. I don't think it really matters here. It matters a lot more versus like Domain and a little little more versus like Control and Three Colored decks. But I guess we'll go ahead and make them search for a basic. I guess it's um you know better than nothing. So, but yeah, getting rid of the Evangelist is going to be the key here. We could have went Resin. For oh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. We could have alternatively went for the Millennium Calendar and then the Brass's Tunnel Grinder. But like we have to discard with the Tunnel Grinder. And if we're going to commit to the calendar at all, I want the all will be one. But I think that might be a little slow right now. Alright, got three cards. I, I don't want to see the Imidane's Recruiter, obviously. But if they do play it, I don't think we're, like, really screwed yet. The Evangelist is going to go bye-bye next turn. And it's going to be exiled, not killed. So they're not going to get that that little 1-1 one -one bat in the air. So oh, they are. They are going to swing in. All right, so they're going on the aggro train here. Frontliner and the Sanguini. I, I don't think we're, we're ready to do, kill the Evangelist. Not yet. Yeah, this has got Menace, Battle Cry. So we kind of, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think we're still pretty good to do that. Let's go ahead and just do what we can. I mean, they still aren't putting, like, that much damage on the board. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. It's probably just better to kill the uh, the bat in the air, right? So we definitely want to get rid of the 3-2. So let's do this and this. Yeah, I'll go to that. I don't... I mean, what are we taking here? Six? That's not that bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. And another one. Another one is definitely brutal. So now we have to make this, like, weird decision yet again. We're definitely getting rid of at least one Evangelist. So that's nice. But I want to see if we want to go for... <laughs> we're in that exact same predicament. Do I want to go for the Millennium Calendar? Or do I want to go for the Brass's Tunnel Grinder? 
Well, we are in that same exact predicament. Uh, let's go ahead and attack with the same exact thing. But this time, this predicament's a little less because now we just get rid of that evangelist. That feels pretty good. That feels pretty good with our little Spear of Justice here. I'm not still getting with the Buzz Crusher because that does not have Vigilance. I don't know if we're exactly erasing that accurately. Let's go for the Millennium Calendar. And do I want... Man, this is actually close. I think I just want to put down the, um, the Parlor. I think I want to put down the Parlor. And and uh, just I, we don't need any more land. Oh, Sunfall. Okay, so now Sunfall kind of changes the game up here. Let's put down the Brass's Tunnel Grinder, but I'm not going to discard. Or should I? Now that I have Sunfall, this whole entire like um, thing is a little bit different. So if we do this, it's essentially a plus one, and then I get Sunfall, and then not. I think just given the fact that this is a more aggro type matchup, we, this is really awkward. So we did put down the Millennium Counter. Maybe I should just kept it. Mm, yeah, a little awkward there, but we still have a Sunfall. So now I'm like leaning towards the Sunfall instead of like the, the just racing. Ooh, okay, well, there we go. It, it all ended up again. That's the reason why as, as soon as I saw Sunfall, I'm just like leaning towards just just the removal aspect because you might as well. You might as well with this deck because this deck can just explode. The Boros Convoke deck is so dangerous. It can just explode out of absolutely nowhere. So we still do have this Millennium Calendar up here. Let's go ahead and swing. I am gonna I'm gonna cast the Sunfall here. And well, let's give the Buzz Crusher menace, just so that the little one one can't chump it, and we'll take our damage here while we can. And then we're gonna Sunfall here. Yes, yeah, it's fine. This actually does not kill it because it's the first strike. Yeah, it does not. Yeah, it doesn't kill it. Maybe they thought it did, but now I mean, gosh dang, it's almost close. <laughs> they gave us some oops. Yeah, well, hey, we'll give a uh, yeah, um, we'll give a cheers to you. Cheers to you, my friend, but yeah, um, it's close. It really is. I think I'm still going to go for the Sunfall. I did commit to it. The Sanguini is kind of annoying, and, the, you know, the Emanating Recruiter does put up damage, and now we've got a 6-6. Six, six. This whole game felt a little weird. The Millennium Calendar should have probably been discarded for the Brassus Tunnel Grinder if we're not going to go for the all-for-one type of win condition, but overall, I still think we just played it pretty okay. Warden, and then they go for the Emanates, right? Yep, it's pretty much the only thing they can do. They put up, what, five damage? We go down to nine. That's not really that bad. And we just take it. They just swing in. Yeah, they just they just let the game go completely. We've got the uh, Restless Bivouac, and we've got the uh, six... Yeah, they, they just get up the game. They could have at least let a Warden of the Sky back, but yeah, they just let the, the game go. So, um, I will take that, and we'll clank it up. GG's. Tall guy, how you doing here? Let's see if you're true to your name, or are you going to go wide on me like those Boro scumbags? <laughs> Yeah, not like us. We're the, we're like, you know, we're the cool Boros, you know. So that way, I saw that. That was a mulligan. Let's go ahead and give our opponent a friendly mulligan. Hello. Everybody needs and deserves a mulligan or a friend. We take a mulligan. So they give us a hello back. All right, tall guy. I like you already. Wow. So this is looking like Azorius. Okay. So, okay. Um, The thing about me, I'm not dropping the Mirix token because we might need the white for the Lord of the Third Path just for some reason. But I am running Boros Control. My, I thought that, like, Azorius control, like, true... Oh, God, Jace. I thought, like, true blue Azorius, like, control, Focus mill, etc., etc. No we have a horrendous space. matchup versus this. I think the only way we can, like, truly win is if we get into a Urabast Forge. So, unlike uh, some best of one decks here, like the last one I posted was, like, the Tamir. That one, we kind of knew we had, like, a really bad matchup versus, like, Mono Red and, like, Aggro and stuff like that. This deck, the Boros Control deck, I just know... I know that we have a really bad matchup versus, uh, whatchamacallit, versus control. So this is going to be a tough test, but let's go for the Krinkles Buzz Crusher. We are going to, I think I am going to sacrifice one of my lands here just to get some more white sources here. But yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be pretty hard. Memory Deluge, okay. Okay. Let's do this. And you know what? I mean, maybe it has just been like recency bias, but I have gone up against a lot less Azorius like control, just like, like control control. So I thought maybe like people just weren't playing it anymore. So I was like, maybe we'll just go Boros Control. We get rid of the um, the aggro decks, and we still like beat the other decks too. The only the only deck we like really have a hard time with is like like is like you know this kind of stuff. But okay, um, I think we're still fine. I think we're still fine here. They're gonna go straight in for the Field of Ruin. This actually is completely fine with me. So we were light on white sources but now it looks like we're going to be light on red sources what a world that is magic the gathering folks that's going to get rid of that and 
That what, what a world. Because now we're short on red, but we don't really care about being short on red. I care about nothing. I care about nothing. We got the sundown pass, and I'm gonna put my fingers crossed. Let's go in for our Elspeth, but let's go ahead and swing in first. Let's give them something to worry about. They still have to worry about the, the Krinko's Buzz Crusher. And let's go for the Elspeth. No, oh, come on, no! Oh, negate. Oh, goodness. All right. Not looking good here. I think the Russell's Bivuax is probably going to be our best thing. So I'm assuming with like five cards. Okay. Well, I was just saying, I was assuming with like five cards in their hand that they probably had an answer for the for the Buzz Crusher here. They were going to have to swing in if they had like an Emperor. Yeah, they're flashing their hand. Oh, oh no. Alright, so Emperor comes out to play. Obviously brutal. This is why this deck is so, um... Our deck gets murdered by, like, real control, because we're, like, fake control. So, this kind of, like, a Zorius, you know, stereotypical type of a control build here does do us really in, because all of our cards, all of our creature removal does not do as much. And then our, um, like, top game, like our ceiling, our late game, whatever you want to call it, is not nearly as impactful as the memory they lose, Jace, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like, just, we just don't have that kind of, like, uh, we just don't have that kind of, like, late game here. So, they're back up to 20. I got this Lorne of the Third Path, and they're already putting counters up. Let's see what, if, with Remember Lorne of the Third Path, training. I think the only, like, really pesteringly thing that we can have versus this deck, again, is the Urbrass Forge. Because, oh, Lightning Helix is not close. But, the Urbrass Forge, what we can do with the Urbrass Forge, let's go for the Temporary Lockdown first off. Maybe we can sneak in and just kill the Emperor here. Unless they have, like, another negate. I can play around and make this a pe Oh, brutal. Brutal, 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 brutal. Okay, so this Lightning Helix to the Emperor, but uh, so negate really is rough. I was playing around to make this appear. And the No More Lies. Negate. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, good. that's good stuff here. Uh, the Farewell and the Sunfall, not very good. I'm trying to think, do I even want to activate Lord of the Third Path? I'm going to give them a card, but I think I just have to just try and search for Urbrass Forge. The Forge gets around the Get Lost in a lot of the, like, removal type stuff, so I think that is, like, our only hope in this type of matchup. Um, Another Jace, yeah. See, our Sunfall and Farewell is just so not good Six versus them. Alright, here comes I the Mill. We okay. Can improve upon your idea. It's a lot of cards in their hand. That's a lot of cards in their hand. Well, I guess we're gonna have to go for the Brass Tunnel Grinder here. No negate this time, which is good. And let's just get rid of both these things. These things suck. I know the Farewell can get rid of like the Memory Day Luge. There's our Urbass Forge. Let's go for it. Straight in. Okay, we at least got the Urbass Forge. It at least gives us like a snippet of hope. Like a small itty bitty witty bitty snippet. And we're just gonna have to hope for this Urbass Forge just eventually can just do something here. Let's go ahead and swing in here. We have to just be aggressive now. It just doesn't, nothing else really matters. We just have to put damage a, a, as soon as we can here. So they are going to trade, which is fine. It actually is a little bit weird. They could have, I think they could have killed the other one and then kept the 2-2. Two, two. I don't really care too much. That's completely fine with me. If they see a fair, like, if they don't have a farewell, this Urbass Forge gets around Get Lost. It gets around pretty much it everything here. So dude. I don't want to say everything, but you know what it is. All right, well, I got literally nothing here. I think we're just going to go for the Restless Bivouac. Go for our Urbrass Forge. If they do have like a Get Lost, they do have a Get Lost. Uh, we at least get the Descend Trigger off the Brass's Tunnel Grinder, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm just gonna swing in here. Um, both these creatures are not gonna be on the battlefield for Jace to target when it's their turn, so we're just gonna have to do this. If they have another Wandering Emperor, <laughs> just because it's gonna be what it is. But the Urbrass Forge is now live and underway. We might be okay here. We might be okay. So they did let this go through. Down to 15, this Urbrass Forge is going to get bigger every single turn. How this Memory Deluge comes out. That's scary. That's scary. That's a lot of cards in their hand. That's a lot of digging. That's a lot of lot of. That's a lot of, lot of, lot of stuff. But as long as we have those Urbrass Forge, I think we're okay. Because I, I, obviously they could be, um, you know, they could be running the March. I think the, the White March can get rid of artifacts. Farewell can. Farewell is, is absolutely... That's absolutely farewell. Let's go ahead and give him a spankings. Raya, Darja, Raya, Raya, Yada, how are you doing? How you doing? How you doing here? All right, let's see. Uh, so now pass. Gonna get the get lost. Got removal. So hopefully we're playing removal. Like I think I. Oh, thank goodness. I don't. Know, thank goodness we're playing against a uh, an actual creature deck. We can kind of pick apart the creature decks here. The um the control decks are a big problem, but restless bivouac. I definitely don't love you on turn two. But let's go ahead and just let them play the something out. 
make them have a lull them into a false sense of security, and then we can drop our lightning helix. So the Thram portal? This might be Gruel. Uh, let's say no. You know what? I think we'll just take it. I mean, I could go for the lightning helix, but I'd rather just uh, still like I can just take one damage from the Swift Spear. That's that's nothing. All right, I gotta go for the lightning helix on the Scamp. Obviously, that green source just screams Tyvar Stand or Royal Treatment or something like that to the high heavens. But I'm still gonna go for it. Oh, it is. That is unfortunate. But at least the the prowess didn't go through on the Swift Spear. So let's get down our Restless Bivouac. And now that I know, well. Do they have, like, what? I mean, do they really have another Tyvar stand? Let's go ahead and just do the same exact thing. I think it's uh, it's better to do this than to have the monsters rage something. And Audacity. I think this is a good time. Let's just go in for the Audacity right on the scamp. And hopefully they don't have another... And no, they don't. They don't. That's good. Down to one. 17. Um... Uh, map token? Map token's a little bit better than the Monstrous Rage. I'm always scared of a Monstrous Rage. Just, you know, I mean, I think you can kind of understand if you if you know. If you know, you know. Let's go ahead and get down the Bivu. Well... Yeah, let's just get down the Bivuac, I think. I mean, the alternative would just be, like, go for Field of Ruin, but we can still go for Get Lost either way. And as long as we have the Sunfall, I mean, we have enough white for the Sunfall anyway, but... There's no chance that we're going to go for Field of Ruin over the Get Lost. So... <laughs> All right, let's do this. I could go for Get Lost now, but that... Nah, that no, we're not going to do that. That gives them... That gives them more tokens anyway. So let's go ahead and just wait till they do this, and let's wait till they swing in. Two cards in hand. This is a little sweaty. As long as we can get into Sunfall, let's do this. So, swing in. I hope they do have one pump spell. Let's go ahead and say no. Come on. Please, oh, well, ah, I guess it's not Monstrous Rage, but let's go ahead and go for the Get Lost anyway. Get lost on the Swift Spear, and we're still going to take, what, three, five, so we'll go down to six? Yeah. Hopefully they don't have, like, a, um, a giant growth or something like that. They do not. So now I'm a little nervous here, though, because the Kamado gets around our Sunfall kind of, like, uh, by default, so that kind of sucks. Picnic Ruiner. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about being a little crazy here. I'm thinking about being crazy here because they have this Kamado. I don't really want to waste a Sunfall on one creature. I think I'm going to let this go. Let's have the come on. We have the Restless Bivouac and plenty of land. And we've got enough white for the Sunfall, even if they do kill. So, worst case scenario, I can just chump block with this Restless Bivouac. I want them to go a little more wide. I want. I know this is greedy, but I think we kind of have to be a little greedy here. We got to get a little more value out of the Sunfall. Especially with this Kamano leaking around. Yeah, let's do this. I know this is a chump block, which is brutal, but... Again, let's hopefully play, play down the Picnic Ruiner. There we go. Okay, that's fine. Play one more thing. Come on. Uh, all, right, all right. Oh, Temporary Lockdown. Okay, so that was... Okay, Temporary Lockdown is going to be even better. Oh, my goodness. Temporary Lockdown gets rid of the Kamanu. So, Temporary Lockdown is actually better than Sunfall right here. That is, How many times do you see that? Where Temporary Lockdown is genuinely better than Sunfall? Just straight up. That is crazy. They just give it up. I have nothing else to play. And they just give it up. Oh, thank God. Okie dokie. This looks pretty good. Yeah, don't think I have much uh, qualms with this start. So, um, let's see what we got here. I think we're looking pretty good. Let's see what we're going against. Hopefully, just no, uh, no Azorius. Humans. All right, so humans, it's going to be... Is this going to be like Mono White or is this going to be the Convoke stuff? Either way, we are well equipped for it. So, let's go ahead and just pass. I may not want to go for a Lightning Helix. We might just want to go for this Temporary Lockdown. But we'll see. Human. Ooh, Thalia. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do I want to go for... Oh, we have to do this now. It's either now. I think I am going to go for Lightning Helix. Get this up to 23. Maybe that, I mean, the alternative would be just kind of wait and then Lightning Helix the Thalia. Hmm. But I kind of want to get into the Krenko's Buzz Crusher. I think we made the right move here, even though this is a little... Yeah, Thalia definitely puts us a little awkward. Cavern of Souls? Ooh, Adeline. Okay. So Adeline's a little bit... Adeline's is a little annoying. I think we're just going to have to go for the Krenko's Buzz Crusher here. Or do we want to go for Temporary Lockdown and get rid of their stuff? Hmm. I think the move is to just... Well, let's get rid of the Cavern Souls. I don't think it's going to matter. I think they're still probably just like a mono white deck or maybe Boros. But the Adeline, we can trade with the Krenko's Buzz Crusher. And I think that's what we're going to do. Let's just straight up trade with the Adeline. And then we can go for the Temporary Lockdown. And hopefully, they don't put down anything super crazy. Even a Brutal Cathar would actually be really rough. It's been a while. 
It's been a while since I've seen a like a, like a just mono white. I don't see you don't see this a whole lot anymore. But I do think that we are relatively well equipped to handle it. The all will be one does cost one more, which obviously sucks. Copper coat vanguard. This is actually it's not great, but they're wow, and they don't swing in. We get another temporary lockdown. That is absolutely wonderful. Let's go for the parlor. Get lost. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna keep that all day. Let's go for the temporary lockdown. Wow, I thought for sure they were going to just like charge in, especially with this Adeline here. That is pretty wild. And you know what? I don't know if I want to, do I want to race and swing? I think, no. Well, actually, gosh damn, I probably should have. I kind of forgot about that get lost on top. The get lost can take care of Adeline. And then the lockdown can get rid of all the other small stuff. So I probably should have swung there in hindsight. Evangelist. Okay, Evangelist does get over our temporary lockdown too. They are swinging in here. I think I am. Man, it sucks. It sucks having that 1-1 one, one out, and I can... I have to get lost, but... I don't know. The Adeline does look pretty juicy to trade with here. Let's just get rid of it and kind of reevaluate. Get lost is okay. We can actually... Maybe I just want to set down all will be one. I, what I can do here is go for get lost and then temporary lockdown on the Evangelist. Or do I want to get... I, let's just go ahead and set down all will be one. Now, the all will be one does absolutely nothing right now. Because <laughs> we don't have like an Urbass Forge, we don't have a Planeswalker, we don't really have anything. So that kind of, or a Millennium Calendar, obviously that's the big one. But um, I think just getting it down may prove fruitful. Get, oh, get lost on our thing. We have another uh, temporary lockdown, but um, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely not great here, especially with the Battle Cry. But we we already had that accounted for. I actually think we're fine here. We're actually fine. Yeah, we're actually fine. What am I worried about? If we go for um. Um, temporary lockdown here. We have to do this now because we don't have enough for the get lost on the evangelist first. Because now they're gonna get the uh, the bat when this dies. But the Thalia made it so that we couldn't go for both. So let's go for the get lost now. Wait, this is actually. Hold on, I don't even know if that's even a, a human. That might be a vampire. It's not a human. So maybe we maybe we uh, we just jumped the gun here a little bit on that one. Okay, either way, I think it's fine. Um. Getting a little, a little scared here now. I still have one more get lost, but, you know, we're giving them a lot of map tokens here. Skrell. I don't like the Skrell, because now eventually Skrell's just going to be able to kind of pick stuff off with our spot removal. So, let's go for the map token. I think we're going to have to do this, especially if they have Skrell. Like, if they have Skrell, let's let them have one, maybe, and then they... Oh, there's a land. Okay, that's kind of unfortunate. But now they're going to go for the second one. I think we're going to have to get lost on them, but then they get two more map tokens. Perfect efficiency, which really sucks for us, but maybe I just let this go. Ossification. Uh, we're going to have to get some help here. We're going to have to get some help. I think I'm going to do this now. It does suck, but at least now they can't use the map tokens before combat. We definitely just need a, uh, we need a Planeswalker. Or like a sunfall. We need a power spell. We're, right now, the all will be one. This is kind of the downfall of the all will be one kind of synergy here. Is we you need something else to kind of have on it. Right now, we just don't really have anything. So, um, it is nifty when it works, but when it's not, I mean, because like, what's the alternative? Ooh, a farewell. Well, farewell does keep us in the game. Absolutely. Hmm. I think we're just gonna have to cast this. I don't want to take any more damage here. So let's not get rid of enchantments. Let's go for the creatures. I think we can just go for the graveyard. I don't really use the graveyard, so uh, let's not go for enchantments. Let's just go for creatures and graveyards, sure. Okay, so we I mean we're all we are back into the game. I would prefer a, I would have preferred a sunfall. Sunfall would have given us a creature on the back end, whereas farewell actually does not. Oh, and an adversary that okay, we only get one buff. I guess we get one buff. That's not as bad. 4-2. A Crinkle's Buzz Crusher does kind of keep us in the game, so we'll do this. Get rid of the Foundry. I guess I am going to kill my own thing here, just because um, I want to thin out my deck. I don't want to top deck into a land, so might as well, yeah, thin it out as much as we can. Get rid of the, uh, the Foundry, and we're looking okay here. Okay. Um, it's really brutal. Oh, brutal. <laughs> well, did I say, did I just say brutal before the Brutal Cathar came out? Yeah. All right. So fingers crossed. This is looking a little rough here. Temporary lockdown does not do anything. Okay. So temporary lockdown is great versus Boros, but not versus this. I'm gonna still cast this because if not, the uh, the Brutal Cathar is gonna go through. So I was gonna tempted to be a little bit more greedy, but 
It is what it is. We still get rid of you and the Brew Cathar is staring us down, but now I'm assuming it's going to go nighttime. Oh, oh, there's, oh my god, no way. Okay, okay, hold on. Here's the Millennium Calendar. The only problem with the moon ring, okay, oh god, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tap all my stuff out, because the way the Millennium Calendar works is that it gets a counter for every time we untap. So, as long as we just, like, you know, tap all of our stuff out, we're, we're fine. But the only problem with the Moon Rage is I can't target it. No! Oh, another... No, this is so bad. Oh, I think we're... I think we're done. I can't target these Moon Rage Brews. Okay, so we're just gonna have to get some more board presence on here. So we just can't... If we did, we cannot top deck a land. This is actually rough. Ooh, okay. Fingers crossed here, because now I can't target these things. They have ward. Pay three life. I have one life! Okay, um, I'm, I'm nervous here. Okay, let's just go ahead. Let's tap all of our stuff out so that we get the counters. But again, I can't target these Moon Rage Brutes. I have to just go for the face, and they have so much life that it's not going to matter. All will be one. Yeah, let's go for the face. Just fingers crossed, no land. Oh my gosh, hold on. Hold on. Wandering. I think I still lost. Oh, it's so brutal. That's such a good time. I, I think I still lost. I, yeah, I lose. Because I can't go for the Wandering Emperor, target the Moon Rage Brute. I, I lose. Yeah, wow. This is awful. Oh, man. What a nightmare. I'm just trying to think. Is there, is there, am I missing something? I don't have a Bivouac to block. I don't have anything, really. I can flash in the Emperor, chump block one. Go for the calendar. The calendar, yeah, I guess we'll just do this for fun. That is wickedly unfortunate. That is wickedly unfortunate. We have the combo. The all will be one. We got the the million counter. We would have won uh, last time or last game, but we'll go ahead and get in the good game. Dang. Yamato. Yamato Tomato. How you doing here? All right. It's got the, uh, need another white source here, but we'll find it. We'll find it. No problem. Brass's Tunnel Grinder. Okay, that could be pretty good. It is a silver bullet. I guess I'll put it away, but I think it's, again, we're, we're just doubling down. We're doubling down on the, um, whatchamacallit. We're doubling down on the bad matchup versus, like, controls. I'm going to say, if we have, if we're going against, like, control, the temporary lockdown and the sunfalls aren't looking very good. So, is this control? Oh, my gosh. I thought no one, I'm playing Boros control because I thought this was, like, the perfect deck to kind of sneak into, like, the today's meta because I thought no one was playing it. Obviously, this is a really bad matchup for us. So, if we can just try and get down the Elspeth, that's going to be what we got to do here. But all of our removal stuff, they're effectively just dead cards. Oh, and a quick study. Things are... Oh, this is already looking brutal. Already looking insanely bad. All their cards, like, draw cards and actually do stuff here. This is by far the worst matchup here. Already sweating here. All right. I think if we can get down the Elspeth, we at least have a chance to do something here. I'm not going to go for the Lightning Helix to the face. That feels pretty pathetic. So we'll just go ahead and just... Uh, maybe they think that we got something going on here. Ooh, okay. There's the Urbass Forge. There's the Urbass Forge. Looking good. That at least puts us hope. But I think we're still gonna go for the El uh, Elspeth Resplendent. The reason is no more lies. I'm assuming it's. Oh, okay, okay. Let's go for. Okay, let's go for the minus three. It'd be kind of nice if we could get into a forge with the Elspeth. Oh well, that sucks a lot. Uh, we might as well get a surveil for our troubles, but we whiff. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's so brutal. And I get lost. Oh my god. Okay, that's pretty rough. Okay. Well, with the parlor, well, let's get rid of that. I think we're just looking for Urbass Forge or any sort of permanent. Yeah, but get lost thing Planeswalkers really makes this matchup super brutal. I'm going to go for the Urbass Forge, though, and just hopefully we can kind of just get something going on here. Ugh, okay. <laughs> All right, we do play around No More Lies and make this appear this way, and I think this is going to be the only way we can really win. Urbass Forge, fingers crossed. We do have uh, mana to kind of pay for both. Oh, and we get it to go. We get it to go. Looking good here. Looking good. So at least there's a little sliver of hope. If we can just have the Urbass Forge just kind of like um, take control of control. And there's the March. No, I, I think we're just going to have to give it up. Gosh darn it. Turbo lag. How you doing here? All right. Um, no red. No red in the opening hand, which we don't love at all. We have a feel of ruin, though. And we got this temporary lockdown. I think we're just going to double down. If we just get, like, blown over by something, like, super crazy aggro, we're just going to take... Oh, well, that was a mulligan, so we at least have that going for us. Let's go and give our opponent the friendly mulligan. Hello. We got the Kamado Faces Kakazan, and we're already looking good on that front. And there's a red source. There we go. There we go. I was going to say, if we go in for the uh, the temporary lockdown, we can just... The temporary lockdown on the um, 
kind of saves us. And then, you know, we got the field of ruin to kind of search for a red source. But none of that matters anymore. The only thing that we're mattering is that we're getting beat down. Down to 16, which actually isn't that bad. I guess we can go for the get lost. Got the temporary lockdown. Come on, I'll fix this hex out the play. It is what it is. But, all right. So, we could go for the get lost on the strongest creature, or come on, let's face this, that's fine. I kind of would like them to tap out, because they have Monstrous Rage. I'm not comfortable going with the Lightning Helix on the adversary. We could just get lost on the get, on the adversary, but I think you want know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the Lightning Helix on the Kamanu, because if they have the Monstrous Rage and we go for the adversary... Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that, because if we go for Monsters Rage on the adversary, they go up to 4 toughness, and then we just don't even get the kill, and that would be back-breaking. But, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, because we do have the temporary lockdown anyway. Yeah, but we would have taken more damage. All we care about in our life is just your life. You know how this goes. Mono Red can just put so much damage, and that's how we uh, lose. Alright, next turn, I mean, we got this Pinkle's Buzz Crusher, but we don't have a red source. Or, we don't have a double red source here, so, looking a little bit rough there. Mm. Uh, I definitely don't love that. Oh, we got an Emperor. Okay, wait. Red Source be damned. We're not going to have to go for the Field of Ruin type of nonsense. And especially because they only run mountains. So the Field of Ruin is not really that good in this matchup here. But we do have the Wandering Emperor. We don't have to worry about anything else. Now I got the Sunfall. And let's go in for the Wandering Emperor. I'm not going to be cute here and make a 2 2 and then block and do that kind of stuff. No, no, no. Let's just get the removal, get our life gain up. All I care about is seeing that precious life go up versus Mono Red. We'll figure out the rest later. It's about your life, Pooh. The only resource that really matters versus Mono Red here. And we get another. Oh, speaking of Mono Red, we get a Mono Red land here, being a mountain. And now I can just go for the uh, Kringle's Buzz Crusher. Let's go for the plus one here. Just kind of, well, let's, well, let's go for the Buzz Crusher first. And, um,. Yeah, let's not buff the uh, the Emperor. We can give a plus one, plus one counter to the Buzz Crusher. Obviously, we're kind of kind of unfortunate here, but I think we are going to probably get rid of the Field of Ruin. Um, the targeting, oh, I was going to say, the Wish Talker Frenzy is like, pretty much the only burn spell that can like realistically hit it. So that kind of sucks, but I think I am still going to go for the Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin is absolutely dead. We do kind of like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, thin ourselves out here, and I think we're looking okay here. I'm going to go for the plus one. They only have a 1-1. One, one. And they're in top deck mode, so if they don't have any sort of help, the Wandering Emperor is going to survive, and the Wandering Emperor is just going to be a person. Oh, it's like the best top deck. Hold on, that's like the best top deck. Um, I guess they could go for like the Witch Soccer Frenzy, but they don't have. Okay, never mind. I was say they don't have like a Lightning Strike or something like that. They actually don't have like a meaningful target. So Emperor goes bye bye. Sorry, Emperor, but now we got the Sunfall, and we're looking good. Bedouac goes down. Sunfall. Goodbye. The counter is only going to be a two two, but I mean, I mean Sunfall. Oh, Sunfall's fun when you cast it. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much here. Oh, a Squee! No way! Oh my god, a Squee's actually really annoying. That's actually really annoying. Oh, now we got two things to do. Oh. Well, you know what else is annoying? <laughs> Farewell. Farewells. Um, let's not do, uh, uh, let's not do artifacts, because I have an artifact. So let's do graveyards, creatures, and not do enchantments, because that's the temporary lockdown. Get out of here, Squee. Remember when I said Sunfall was fun when you cast it? Wait till you hear about farewell. Okay, so parlor comes out. We do get to sur surveil. Oh, I want. Remember, remember when I said sunfall was fun to, to cast? I guess we're gonna maybe. I don't know. I could actually consider putting this away though because we don't have. I think we're just gonna be aggressive here. I mean, they can't really do eleven damage with like two cards. Worst case scenario, if they're just like waiting, I think we're okay to start racing here. And I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I put that Sunfall away, which might be a little bit weird, but I do have the, the Aganjo, 11 life, and I get lost. A little cocky here, but I think if I'm going to incubate the Toad, oh, it doesn't matter. They go down. Mm. Okie dokie here. So, very online dad. I have no red sources for you, very online dad. So, do me a favor and don't kill me very quickly. Can you do that? Very online dad. All right, come on and face this Kakazan. Mm, we got Sunfall. And I get lost, and I got a Wandering Emperor. We don't, we only have two sources of, um, well, we, we have two sources of non-colored stuff here. We got two Field of Ruins, which is obviously unfortunate. Bloodthirsty Adversary. We are relatively well equipped to kind of take care of this kind of stuff. We, you know, I do think this is like where we shine. Obviously versus Mono Red. We got plenty of Emperor. We got get lost. We got all these different things here. So I think we'll be okay. Even on the draw versus Mono Red, we got the removal. I think we can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. 
Kamano faces Kagsen's brutal. I don't have a temporary lockdown, which is Kamano faces Kagsen's worst enemy. Let's go ahead and do this so that maybe they can go for a monstrous rage. And there it is. You know they already have it. You know they already have it. Let's go for the get lost. And that feels absolutely beautiful. And oh my god, that does not feel beautiful. That does not feel beautiful. So now we still get the Kamano, and that is brutal. We are, we're at 10 life before I even sniff turn 3. Woo! That is rough. Okay, next turn we got the Emperor. Right now we just gotta get lost. Um, whew, that's rough. There's no way around it. That is pretty rough here. Map token on the etching. I guess I guess I'm gonna do this. That leaves them no creature. If I, So even if they do have the other map tokens, that doesn't leave us the creature. I think we might be okay here. Got the Wandering Emperor to kind of exile, gain some life. Then we got a Sunfall. Uh, adversary obviously sucks a lot just because they get have haste. Any sort of haste creature is kind of brutal here. Um, oh, now, ooh, now we got a temporary lockdown. Now I'm just trying to think. Is temporary lockdown better than the Emperor here? I think it is because we get rid of the Kamanu and the Bloodthirsty Adversary and all those map tokens. So even if we were to go for Emperor, I think the lockdown is the best move there. Emperor exiles get rid of two life, but Squee is unfortunate. I, ooh, ugh. Down to four. And do we want to go for Sunfall or do we want to go for Emperor? I think we're going to go for Sunfall. If I was at three life, if I was at three life, I'd go for Emperor. Because I'm at five, I think I'm okay to do that. Because now they have to double double burn me. So, yeah, maybe that was a little too cocky. Wicked roll. Yeah, maybe I... Wow, I thought for sure. Okay, let's just go. Let's waste no time. Let's go for the Emperor. I thought for sure we were kind of toast there. That was a little, that was a little too, um, a little too risky. We could probably take us down to three. As long as they don't have a lightning strike. Man, I don't know, though. I, in high, I'm not salty. I swear. 